Mr. Nasty, are you with them as you turn? So you're turning from your hips, from your waist. Just place one hand on your belly, the other hand on your back, just to round back the small of your back for a few moments. So that you just have this idea that you know you, you your your whole body is turning. And you're not you're not um so turning left to right necessarily. You're because the rear of your body is going the opposite way. So, but if you can start to think of it as a circle. And then just let your hands drop down. The idea of that is just to, to broaden your awareness a, li a little. I think we probably habitually carry with us a, a, a sense of this being our body, the front and the upper part of our body being the body. And it's easy to see why, and most times it's, it's, it's very useful. But it's good to have sort of in, in the background of that, a much more holistic sense of what's happening in the body. So the, the whole unit, from toes to the crown of your head, from front to back. That will subtly influence how we are moving over a period of time. Imagine doing this in, in water so that you imagine the um, the resistance of the water. And just feel what difference that begins to make to the way that you're moving. Be aware of any areas of stiffness, tightness in your body, any area where you feel that the movement being kind of blocked or held, whichever movement, the rotating movement, the downward movement, the upward movement. And just remind yourself that those areas actually, whether it feels like it or not at the moment, are mostly water, they're three quarter water or something like that. So that even when they feel very tight and, and very solid, there's the potential to, to sort of view them slightly differently as though they were just sort of lumps of something floating in water. And it's that sense of the floating that you, that you want to try and develop so that, the, that those areas of tightness will either just dissolve away and or open up a little bit. So this opening set of exercises is both a, a physical warm up and a preparation for the movement, but also a chance to just assess what's going on in your body at the moment. That's a very useful thing to do. For one thing, it, it begins that process of just drawing your attention into your body. So the focusing of that attention and the maintenance of that focus of your attention is important. And it also gives you a sense of how you want to work today, where your limits are. And information like that becomes 
some, something that, that, that stays with you, you're, you're less likely, whether in, you know, either in Tai Chi or just washing up or, 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 or whatever, to do something that you know, causes you to, to wince or something like that, gives you more chance of development in these arts. And then just raising your arms a little. One useful little variant on this, and I'll, I'll stand here, keep, keep going with your arms out, but if you just turn your hands palm in, and then rotate your arm again, turn your hand palm down, and then palm out, just feeling the, 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 the difference between the different angles. And when, when you've got a sense of that, as you do this, you can just rotate gently and your hand palm down works your body, requires your body to work in a different way to your hand palm out or palm up or something like that. So it's, it's quite an interesting little exercise and it helps just make you aware of very subtle changes and variants. And as I've said before, these are the, the, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that make up the, the picture we're building of the body. Good, and let your hands drop down. Give your legs a shake. And just a few moments in the standing position. Feet, hips, shoulders, all on a, a line. And remember that could be there or there or there. Yeah, you've got some variations on that, but not out there or in there. Toes pointing straight ahead or slightly turned out. And when I say slightly, this is, this is it. Try, try and avoid that. Or if you if that's what's comfortable for you, realize that actually in, in the long term, you want to try and change that because you know, what we don't want is this to happen. You see my knees are, are, are twisting around. And also when you turn your feet out, and you, you can try it, you can vary it. Then you'll find across your, your lower back and your buttocks as your feet turn out, it kind of squeezes on, on, on the area. So if you're, you're like many people, including myself, whose feet have always turned out like that, what you do is you gradually just keep turning them in. And what will happen over a few minutes is that they'll turn out again and you do that again. But you know, the, the, the muscles in your body will gradually adapt to, to, to that. So, um, it's fairly straightforward. It just takes a while to, to develop that. You're sitting into your hips, into your legs. And your legs have this denser, stronger quality. It goes up your back. So the front of your body, just sort of hanging. Don't, don't, don't try and lift up in in your, your your chest or your ribs. Again, if, if, if you watch, if I do that, notice how my belly comes in. And the trouble with that is you're now squeezing on these internal organs. We wouldn't normally accept that. If, you, if somebody came up to you and you hadn't seen them for a while and they put their arms around you and squeezed hard, you go, oh, I can't breathe. Or sorry, I've just had, I've just had lunch, I can't. I've got to digest my food. And yet we habitually carry ourselves like, like that. The front of your body hanging from the back, supported by your back. And gradually, over a period of time, using imagery like moving through water, that stronger feeling in legs and back builds in the front of the body as, as well. So the connections between organs, the connective tissue, 
the muscles, the tendons, the, the ligaments, and the movement itself gradually become, I'm going to say stronger, become more connected, more fluid. And yeah, with that, with that greater sort of sense of internal strength behind it. And then sinking down and pushing up. Remember, you're using your legs to move your hand. If you look at where my hands actually go, on the upward movement, they end up just below my shoulders. On the downward movement, somewhere in the region of the navel. The rest of the movement comes from my legs. Still as though you're moving through water. The nice steady rhythm, your body expanding, contracting. Trying to just maintain a, a quality of awareness within your body. Maintaining within your body that very fluid awareness, not just moving through water, but moving like water. And then change into the wild goose. and part in the clouds. Now go back to rooting down and do the three of them together in the exercise, harmonizing the three down chains. And then each time you start again and go through the sequence, each exercise drawing both your attention and that expansive quality higher up through your body, belly, and then next stage, 
Berlin and solar plexus. And then then the solar plexus and finally the shoulders and head. So this is a good way of training your awareness of that. Uh, I can say direction, I suppose, of, of, of movement, downwards with the pull of gravity and then upwards from your feet right up through your body. So, of course, it, we want it to be a continuous connection, not just sort of like a, a bit of random movement in our knees and then maybe able to coordinate the movement with our arms. We shouldn't need to coordinate the movement because it's it, it's, it's an inherently natural way of, 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 of moving. And just the idea that we're trying to coordinate two different things, knees and hands, for instance, comes from that idea of, of, of our body being separate units. So this brings us back to that early picture of the body, the, the holistic picture of the whole of our body. Now dragon plucks the stars from the sky. Here we feel that movement going all the way up through the body, into our fingers and then down. One more on each side. This next exercise, don't push up and down, but do sit back and stay sat back, pushing in four directions. So now, as we push out, you're going to turn in the middle of your body. And we begin to realize that a good point of focus is that area of the lower down chin between hips and waist. Because it really is the part of the body that sort of seems to have a, an almost equal link to all other parts of the body. It's not quite like um, a wheel where the spokes are all in, equal in length, but this is the, 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 the sort of junction, if you like, which all movement goes through, and which our attention begins to be focused through. And this exercise, if you're following it closely, which, which is, it, is one of the things that we're trying to do. We'll really demonstrate that by bringing your attention back to here each time. Getting used to doing that is a definite asset if you're interested in some of the more complex movements that we do, because 
they they require a slightly stronger focus of attention into that middle part of your body. Unless you're one of the very fortunate people who does have a very good recall of movement, in which case the struggle is going to be not to, to remember the movement, but to actually do them well. In, in the end, I think it's probably better to take your time and to develop this picture of the body from the middle of your body, because you're, when, when the movements sort of settle into your body, they, they will be that much more effective. Good. Now dropping your hands down, gently draw your fingers back and push down through the heel of your palm. Through the expansion, building through that side of your body as your arm goes out. And see if at some point, you can move your arm not by even that gentler way of pushing the heel of your palm down, but by just almost imagining having the intent to expand in that side of your body. It's comfortable adding the turn this time. switch sides. You may find when you're using that quality of intent, that element of, of intent that is so important in Tai Chi, that perhaps you're, it works better on one side than another. This is not uncommon or better in some parts of your body than another. Again, this is, this is quite normal. It just means we have to sort of practice a little bit more in those areas where it doesn't seem to come quite so easily. And now, turn. And row in a boat in the middle of the lake. Remember, this is your hips going back and then dropping down, buttocks pushing back, and then going back to the sitting position before you push up. One more time. And then we're in a boat in the middle of the lake.
once again, using the hips, the buttocks, move the shoulders, the arms and hands. Very carefully, don't overdo them, the extension with your arm because it puts more strain on, on your back. One more time. And let your hands drop. My legs are shaking. Go into a slightly wider stance. So for the full horse riding stance, start with your feet together, turn your toes out, push your heels out, turn your toes out again. This should give plenty of scope, plenty of space for that feeling in your upper body of it dropping downwards. In, in fact, it should be in, in many ways easier in, in, in this wider stance than in, than in the, the, the narrow stance that that we, we, we take, but it does involve a certain amount of stretching, particularly on the inside of the leg and turning of the muscles and so on and so forth. So it might not be comfortable for you, but in, in, in the long run, it's, it's actually a, a, a very helpful start. And just try and sink down as much as possible. Transferring your weight from side to side. And then transfer on your weight and turn. And once again, place one hand on your belly, one hand on your back, move across and turn. It's only about a 60% weight change. So, And although I've separated out the weight change and the, and the turn in your center, they really are very connected in the end. So now, part in the wild horse is made, hold the ball, your right hand on top, your left hand underneath, go into your right leg, push into the left, turn in so the left hand gets swung out and coming back. Move the ball and move across. So stage is one, two, holding the ball, three, moving across, four, and turn. So one is the move into your left leg that swings your arm out and up. Two is your weight moving back and your body turning to draw your top hand, your left hand, across your chest and you hold the ball. Three, you carry the ball over into your left leg. And four, you turn. And then you're back to one, two, three, and four. Part in the wild horse's mane.
the action is actually a little bit like throwing a frisbee. It's a smooth unfolding. Or maybe if you play, play tennis, maybe it's like it's sort of like the backhand in tennis. There can be a tendency for people to lose the flow because they're trying too hard with, with the arms. So this movement is not up and out, it's a diagonal movement. There's a movement very similar to this, often indistinguishable from this, which is referred to slanting bird flying, which I think is quite an interesting name, because there's a slanting quality there. Another thing to think about with that hand is that it's the, the thumb edge of the hand and arm that's cutting through the air. It's not this, it's this. The palm of your hand faces upwards as it moves out. What you can do as, as you come back is just have the hand slightly up, upright so it's more like the palm of your hand coming, coming back. So here it can be just a slight softening of the hand. We'll do this one more time. Then we're going to move into white ape office fruit, which starts with this movement, albeit with a slightly more extended version. So the, the choir, that little valley here on the, the left really opens and it closes on the right. And then just sink down a little bit more in, in that right hip and feel your body contracting into the leg, your left hand coming across. Imagine your fingers stuck in mud, the fingers of the left hand. So you, you push up, pull your fingers out of the mud, and you drop back down into your left, and you turn both hands piring as though they're holding the ball, and you move across. Now, come back, and this time both hands come across the upper part of your chest, Drop your left hand down and carry the ball back. So again, one. Check your posture at each stage. Notice where your right hand is. Notice where your left hand is. Two. Drop your left elbow. Notice where the hands are. Three. Up and then down. And again, notice where the hands are. They're in front of the chest, not down here, but here. And then four. So now all you've got to do on five is really move your weight and turn. And then six. You come back into your left leg. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. What a pop is through. There are many subtleties to this movement. Not least is that opening and closing in the region of the choir, the front of your hip. What you may find is, as you go into the first stage, yeah, your center is turning, weight's moving. When you get to here, all of that sort of slows down. But if you can sink down just a little bit more in the right, sometimes that helps you to open and close in the choir a bit more. So you get a little bit more movement. Important not to strain in your body. So 
So I can see some of you are dropping your hands down when you don't need to. That's making it more difficult for you. So here, notice where my hands are. They're up almost at shoulder height. So now what I'm going to do is move across. Some of you are dropping your hands down and then you're having to do something to bring the hands up again. And the, the key to understanding the more complex movements is the precision of the movement. Get the positioning of your hands and your body in general, your weight, the turning of your center, and so on and so forth. And then the transition between those positions will become much smoother. Okay, and then just shake out. I think the com more complex exercises are really useful for us because they train us to be more precise. It doesn't matter whether you're any good at them or not, in a sense. If you're trying to get good at them, then, then the, that, that helps with, 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 with that uh, precision. And one foot forwards, and see if you can apply that precision to the transfer of your weight, which is about as simple as you can get. But can you really feel that the weight is going to the right part of your foot, that you're maintaining the alignment of your body, the direction of your, your, your body? You've got that sense of filling up, not letting the, the, the weight get trapped at your hip or in your thigh or in your knee as, as you're moving it, but rather the feeling the weight drop into your foot and feel the leg from the ground upwards as you move. Keeping the alignment of your body. Notice where my arm is. Here, still it's pushing down, pointing down at my ankle. Now here it's clearly not going to because the ankle's back there somewhere, but here it's still shoulder to hip. Being aware of that can help you to avoid this sort of movement. If you're finding that tricky, by the way, just keep going, but, but I'll just show you, when, when we stand here, we're here. What you could do is just gently press your middle finger into your leg and then do this and just maintain that little bit of pressure as much as you can while you're transferring the weight. And if this happens, it puts finger gets pulled forwards, you'll be able to pick that up fairly quickly. You might not need to do that, but it's quite an interesting exercise. Raising your toes and your heel. Stepping in. It feels a little bit, you know, if you are keeping the fingers there for a long time, just be careful you don't start to stiffen up in your shoulders.
Rooted on the other side. If you try this with, you know, with, with that direction of your, of your hands, and it feels a little bit awkward in your shoulders, apart from that slight sense of pressure, but if you can feel your shoulders sort of straining to, to, to move, then you will probably overusing your shoulders to, to make this simple movement. The majority of the effort, remember, comes from your feet and your legs. Your upper body is, for the moment, quite passive. It sits again in your hips. Raising your toes and your heels. Once again, focusing on those aspects of the art that require a sense of precision and the flow of the movement and even the emptying and the filling I've talked about will tend to come much more naturally to you with that precision. I'm stepping in. So you're far more likely to be able to get that sense of your upper body sliding down between your hips. If you've got a good stance. That means getting your foot in the correct place when you take the step. And then stepping through, notice that I do have my foot slightly turned out when I'm doing the step in. That means that this isn't quite straightforward to go slightly on a diagonal line, but it does also mean that I can more easily allow my weight to drop down through my hip and remain more stable. What I want to try and avoid is a really big angle like that, because then I, 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 I would be changing direction. But, but when I go back, I straighten the foot up and then bring it in. Okay, check out. So when when I'm on one leg or or another, I should be able to really feel quite comfortable here. If I, my weight's on my back leg, I can look straight ahead, I can look a little bit to my left, I can look a little bit to my right. When I'm on the front leg, I've got 60% of my weight there. Again, I can look roughly in those three directions. I've got I would, I would less than 180 degrees movement, but a fair range of move, movement that, that means that I'm, I'm, once I've established these alignments in the body, toes pointing forward, so on and so forth, all, all of that kind of stuff, I actually get space for a little bit of opening up of that. It, it, it shouldn't be rigid. We're, we're, we're naturally supple creatures. So you can, you know, once, once you've got the alignment, then you can ease back a li uh, little bit. And I think this is, this is classic sort of um, tactics in a way. We apply a stronger discipline, we get that, and then we say, well, okay, now, now we can sit back. It's much easier to do that 
than it is to sort of try and do this exercise like this and you're, you're all over the place you're not taking a lot of notice and then one day realize that you can't progress in the art because you didn't do this exercise properly and you then have to go back you have to break the habit of doing it in doing it in correctly so that you can then build up that, that the habit of doing it correctly that sounds unreasonably fussy then just bear in mind it's been said to you by somebody who's had to do exactly that <laughs> um, this is not unusually entire cheap place because our attention is always going to be on on our art it's a, it's a very natural thing i think for to to, to happen to us okay similarly when we do bird folds its wings so this is that movement where we, you know we, the, where the hands are basically doing this now if i do this from the side again my middle finger just touches my 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 leg and i just do this and i sort of swivel around on my middle finger slightly awkward i don't get such a big movement but you can see there, you can see my, my, my fingers staying, staying on, on the leg. So it's staying in the same place. And then what I can do with this exercise is I go, well, okay, so now I move out and, but, and I keep the same position. By the same token, when we do bird folds its wings, you can do this. You can actually keep your, your, your hand on your leg and you go forwards and backwards like this. It's on both sides, of course. And then all you've really got to do at this point is push your elbows out a little bit and do exactly the same thing. Just be aware that almost everybody will actually start off doing it correctly. They go, oh, that's good. That's good. And then after a couple of movements, they'll be doing that. Which is not the idea of the exercise. The hands stay in the same position relative to the shoulders and the sides of your body. Your weight moves them forwards and backwards and the opening and closing in your chest and your upper back moves them, rotates them. And then fisherman cast the net here. The hands swing a little bit further, not because we're doing anything different really, apart from imagining that we're in water. So the pressure of the water stops your arms from moving through. In both directions. And a little bit of swing develops. We're not doing this. It's all done through the same mechanisms that we're doing. Bird holds its wings for you. And then we change to pushing a wave and more or less the same there's a little bit of extension and contraction in the arm not as much as you might think because some of that movement is is to do with the elbows going out and once again the chest opening and so on and so forth so I think of an image. If you imagine here, it's almost like you're squeezing your elbows together and pushing your hands together. Imagine it's like if you, it's a slightly odd image, but you had a giant tube of toothpaste and you squeezed on the sides, the toothpaste would go forwards, it would push out through, through the tube, wouldn't it? 
So your hands go forward, not because you're straining in your arms or your shoulders, but because the movements through the, through the rest of your body more or less dictate that that's where they're going to go. So then sit back, raise your front toes, step in, go forwards. And as you bring your back foot in, the arms just lengthen out a little. You go back, and as you bring your front foot in, your hands come back, your elbows go out. So this should stop you overextending your arms, because if you do, you'll feel a little bit of a wobble when you go into the front foot. Okay, and then shake out. So on the other side, starting with bird folds its wings, use, use that image of the, that idea of your hands touching your legs to begin with, either the middle finger staying on the hand, or you could just here, it's, it's the edge of my little finger, and then it's the edge of my thumb. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Just, 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 it's just to, to make you aware, really, not of what your hands are doing, but what, what's happening in your chest and your upper back and in your weight movement. And then your elbows out a little bit. It's very hard not to overdo the arms. There is always going to be an urge to sort of move the arms a little bit more. Just try and keep them quiet. And then this time, going into fisherman cast the net, don't try to move your arms. Let, let the momentum, let the energy naturally build. And then pushing a wave. One more time. And then bring it in the stepping. And excellent. Now put your hands together.
tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. One shoulder, one. Other side. Push your back. Around your hips. Tighten your belly. The upper part of your chest. And shake out. Okay. Now, embrace tiger, return to mountain. Standing for a moment. Just taking a couple of slow, gentle breaths. Maybe just aware of that sharper quality, like the spring mist in your nostrils and the back of your throat as you breathe in. A sense of that quality just sort of spreading out through your body from your lungs. Just sinking down and pushing up. One more time. And stand. Give your legs a shake. Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. So, have you get a chance to? Um, Enjoy.